All right, everybody, today we're gonna to build a laptop. Don't look at me that way, I'm serious. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at this Pi Top. And this is a do-it-yourself DIY build a laptop out of a Raspberry Pi. So a little backstory about this thing right here. This went on sale uh, back in July and it went like way cheap. And it's because it doesn't include a Raspberry Pi. You gotta supply your own. Now, in that same time period is right in the middle of the, you know, pandemic and the, the crisis of supply chain and all that stuff. And, and the Raspberry Pis all disappeared or got extremely expensive. So I think this company here they're tr they're trying to pivot to a new product, and they knew that nobody had any Raspberry Pis, so they were just trying to get rid of these. I think that's that's my guess, because um, it was like way cheap. Um, I was interested in it because it comes with a battery, it comes with a nice 1080p screen. We'll look we'll look at all the specs and what it comes with, and it comes with some nifty stuff to to do some maker type stuff. So I jumped on it. It was pretty cheap, and uh, it was like. Months and months and months went by, didn't hear anything. Actually, they sent out a couple emails along the way saying, hey, we're having trouble getting these things uh, shipped out. Um, so kudos to the team that at PyTop, because they were actually sending emails all the time saying, hey, this is taking some time, we're really sorry. There was two or three emails that came out that said, hey, if you'd like to cancel the order, just click this button, we'll cancel it, we'll give you a full refund. Um, if you want to still wait for it, then you can certainly wait for it. So. Like I said, it was cheap enough that I was willing to wait, and finally in December, uh, it finally came in. So it's been sitting on the shelf over here for a little bit, waiting for me to crack it open and play with it. And luckily, I do have a couple Raspberry Pis sitting around here. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to open this thing up. We're going to check out the, the laptop itself. We probably won't get into any of the maker type stuff. Maybe we'll look at that later. And uh, let's, let's get this thing going and, and make it into a laptop. So checking out the rest of the box, you can see how this thing works. Um, once you open it up, the, the keyboard kind of slides out of the way, and there's these rails right here that you can install the different pieces on. And uh, the Raspberry Pi goes in here. Everything gets hooked up. Um, you got a keyboard, a trackpad, and a screen, of course. And the rail is going to support a couple different type of modules. So you can see it comes with a breadboard and some you know resistors, some LEDs, and different stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure you'll be able to you know, if you follow the directions, uh, make it use the uh, the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi to control your lights. So that's that's kind of nifty. Um, but let's go ahead and open this thing up and check out the the hardware itself. So here's what's inside. We've got the inventor's kit. Like I said, a breadboard and a bunch of components. Looks like maybe even a, a speaker on there. So uh, that's going to be pretty cool to play around with. Here's the uh, the inventor's kit instructions and they've got all these kind of like cardboard punch out um, designs here probably for some of the, the projects we're gonna skip through all that here today and uh, also we've got a power supply which is basically like a a uh, laptop power supply so it kind of makes sense and it's 18 volts two and a half amps so that's uh, that's pretty beefy for running a Raspberry Pi, so I'm guessing the 18 volts is to run the screen, and then there must be a, a transformer in there to step it down, uh, down to the 5 volts needed for the uh, Raspberry Pi itself. So we got all that, and then of course we've got the Pi Top itself. And this thing's pretty heavy. So this is not obviously not something that you'd use as a daily laptop sticking in your backpack type thing. Very plasticky. Um, very heavy, but I think it's the obviously the novelty of building it yourself and uh, and playing around with it. The keyboard itself is full size, pretty nice, decent size trackpad. The screen is I think it's a 14 inch full 1080p uh, HD, full HD, so that's pretty nice. And uh, and then this thing slides open to put the the guts in. So let's uh, crack open these instructions see what it takes to get this thing going. Alright, so I got the getting started 
uh, guide out here. Um, mine didn't come with an oscilloscope, but maybe that's the more expensive model. But we've got step-by-step -step instructions on here on how to make this thing happen. It does mention in here that one of the included items is a Raspberry Pi. So I'm thinking this kit at one point did include a Raspberry Pi, and as they started getting uh, short, then maybe they started selling them without it. But let's go ahead and get these instructions going. Step one, open the lid, slide down the keyboard using the two thumb grooves. So we got the two thumb grooves up here, and the keyboard slides right down, exposing where we're gonna mount everything. Step two says remove the cooling bridge. So the cooling bridge is this thing right here, which is going to act as a heat sink. It says that the uh, Raspberry Pi will get hot because it's enclosed in here, and this will help kind of dissipate that heat. So we're just going to remove this one screw here. And then this thing should lift right off. It's actually got pin headers of some sort. Oh, okay, so it extends the uh, the GPIO pins, looks like, down to here. And this board right here looks like where everything's going to happen. It looks like it's going to plug in to the Raspberry Pi itself and then send the video one way, get the power in another way, and then have some other um, in and outs ready to go. All right, the next step has you check the thermal pad that's on this cooling bridge here and it gives a couple extra thermal pads uh, different thicknesses based upon the model of Raspberry Pi that you're using. So it says if you have a 3 uh, three plus, a 3B plus, then you have to use the skinnier pads. Anything older than the 3B plus, you can use the thicker pads. Now the instruction seat said you don't have to make any modifications at all, um, but it doesn't look like there's any thermal pad on there. It looks like there's just a some blue film on there. So once we get closer to installing that, I'll, I'll double check that. But for right now, it says carefully slide the hub as far as it can go. So this is the hub. And it looks like that's as far as it goes right there. So that's going to give us access to getting this mounting plate out of here. I think that's the next step. Yep, the next step is remove the four screws. Holding this mounting pad down. It says four screws, but it looks like three. Oh, no, there's one more. Just couldn't see it. There we go. And this is just made out of cardboard, which is what it said in there. It said it's made out of cardstock. Looks like the couple extra screws on here. We'll see what that's for. And the next step is to install the SD card. So it comes with an SD card. Where'd it go? There it is. With the PyTop OS in it. So it comes with micro SD looks like it's pre-installed and then it comes with an SD adapter so we're going to take this guy out 16 gigabytes and install it in the bottom of the Raspberry Pi it's important to do that because once this is mounted down you're not going to have very easy access to that I'm sure alright the next step is installing the Raspberry Pi in this I guess this was just a placeholder. This isn't a mounting bracket of any sort, so that's just a, a throwaway. And this is actually going to mount straight down to here. Now right in here, it's kind of hard to see, but there is two what they call flexi USB rubbers. <laughs> and it's it's going to plug into, it's actually the like the male part of a USB plug that's going to go into these two ports, leaving these two ports free, and you can see there's a feed through hole for that and it looks like these two that are plugging in are going across this little ribbon cable here and that's how it gets to this bridge so we're supposed to carefully slide this in here and then mount the Raspberry Pi down with those four screws
and it plugged in nice and easily. So now it's just a matter of putting the screws back in and keeping it in place. All right, that's done. Next step is to slide the hub back to the left, making sure to position the HDMI and audio jacks into the associated ports. And it says they should line up perfectly and click in. So there's the HDMI plug and the audio jack that's gonna go into the Raspberry Pi. And yep, didn't need any modifications or anything, it just clicked right in. All right, the next step is replacing the heat bridge, the thermal bridge, and I did put the thermal pad on there, the thicker one. It had some 3M sticky on the back side of it, just stuck it onto this, this big aluminum heat sink here. And now, when we put this down, that's obviously going to make contact with the CPU here. We're going to make sure that the GPIO pins line up with the header here, and then we're going to press this one down to there. And I'm going to put the screw in here first just to help kind of line things up and hope we can get it with the first shot. And that's sliding down fine on the left side. And it looks like I'm in there on the right side, so I think that's good. So let's go ahead and send this screw down. And there she is. All right, that's all the steps of building. And over here, I don't know if you noticed, but this is their uh, little all-in-one tool that you can actually take out and use to screw down everything. It looks like it's got a little screwdriver head there and uh, it's just magneted right on there. So that's kind of handy. Just in case you don't have a screwdriver with you, just in case you don't have your trusty Strabeto screwdriver kit with you. So it's ready to close up and we're going to test it out. So I plugged the power adapter in and I've got an ethernet cable in here so we don't have to worry about Wi-Fi to, to start up. And it says just hit the button and it should boot. Hey look at that. I still got the protective plastic on here for now. We'll take care of that in a second. If you've never used a Raspberry Pi before, it kind of boots up like a Linux system. So sometimes it'll actually show you all the, the, the steps that it's booting up in the process. I've never used this image before, so we'll see how it boots up. Alright, it's booted up and now it says, are you ready to be a maker? It only gives one choice, so I think I know the answer. So it looks like it's going to step through kind of a setup process, so let me step through that. Alright, so it's going through an update process. I'm sure since this thing's been sitting in a box for a while, there's several updates for it. So I'll go ahead and let that download and install. Alright, so down at the very bottom corner here, it says build date uh, February 2022. So this image has been sitting around for a while. It said it had to download 600 megabytes worth of uh, packages, update packages. And then it says this may take a while to install. So we're going to let that install and I'll check back when it's done. All right, after a bunch of updates and a reboot or two, we are now at the PyTop desktop. And it looks like this is just a, a branded version of like a Debian Linux, because uh, it has all the standard built-in programs that you'd usually see on a build like this. But the, uh, the screen looks really nice. The trackpad, I can tell you, is uh, a little wonky, but if you're gonna be using this a lot, you probably plug a mouse into the back make it a little bit more comfortable for you. Keyboard's fine. Um, but the thing I was wrong about was there is no battery. So you have to keep this power brick plugged in all the time. So it's not a super portable device. But like I said, I think the novelty itself is the fact that you put this together with your own Raspberry Pi and kind of make something out of it. And then later go in and do some nifty stuff with that. So... That's where the novelty exists. This is not going to be a replacement laptop for you. You'd be probably better served going down to Best Buy and slapping $99 down on a Chromebook or something. 
Um, but it was fun to put together nonetheless. Hey, so it turns out I was wrong. As I was putting this away, um, after finishing recording all the video, I took this guy out and uh, the thing's still working. On the bottom there is a little label, which is what caught my eye, that shows the 18 volts and 2.5 watt input, so the 45 watt input, but then it shows a uh, 11 volt lithium polymer 3500 milliamp hour, 38.85 watt hour uh, battery inside. So we didn't see that. It must be here beyond where the, uh, the the keyboard tray pops out, but it definitely has a battery inside, so I was wrong about that. So overall, like I said, fun little project. A uh, lot nicer screen than what I've seen before. I've, I've used a lot of these kind of make your own computer type things, kind of like this, uh, this Kano kit. I've got a bunch of Kano kits over the years that you put together. One of them was a, a laptop and a screen on that one was not near as nice as this particular screen here. So that's worth the uh, the price itself for, for what I paid for this whole thing. The build quality is pretty pretty nice. It's pretty sturdy considering it's all plastic and it does have a, a moving tray. So it's still, the keyboard is nice and sturdy. Uh, the hinges are, are pretty strong, so that's pretty nice. So overall, it's a, a pretty neat little project. So I'll have some fun playing around with this type of stuff and maybe doing some coding on here. And uh, it does have some tutorials to step you through some different projects and uh, and make some different things. Like you can see that they they use that cardboard here to make some kind of a robot or something out of it. So it probably includes some sensors and and uh, inputs and outputs and that kind of stuff. So that'll be fun to play around with. But just wanted to show you guys this Pi Top just in case it ever pops up on your radar again. You at least know what to expect when you open it. And uh, now you know what it can do. So that is going to wrap it up for this video. Hope you enjoyed watching me put together this Pi Top. If you did, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. If you like this kind of stuff and want to see me put more stuff together, then uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button too. But thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.